there's a, there's a village of people called the Maasai people. The Maasai people are an African group, African tribe, known for their vicious fighting, they, their warrior group. They're, all their symbols show war signs. They are known for vicious fighting, the Maasai people of Africa. But they have a greeting, a very beautiful greeting, that does not reflect war, it reflects an understanding of something. When we greet each other, we say, how you doing? How are you? Hi. What's up? And all the different greetings that we have in, in the varying languages and all of that. The Maasai people, when they greet each other, remember this is a very, very vicious warrior tribe, take no prisoners tribe. Their greeting is Kossirian and Gira. That is their greeting. Kossirian and Gira. And you know what it means? It means, how are the children? How are the children? And the response is all the children are well. What are they saying? Here is a people who understood that how we do as a nation towards our children absolutely how, has something to do with how we will be as a nation as we move into the future. The protection of their children is what is primary to them. If we ask throughout Canada, if we ask throughout the United States, Nova Scotia, New Zealand, and all the places that we are from, if we were to honestly ask ourselves and answer the question, and how are all the children, how would we be doing as a society? Not too good, are we? Not doing too good. I was in, in Iowa, Iowa not too long ago with Kay Payne's daughter. She's eight, right? Eleven? Eleven? Okay. Anyway, <laughs> we, um, she kept hinting to me, I guess because she thinks I'm black. Y'all do too, right? <laughs> she said, this is a black dude from Philadelphia. He plays basketball, is what she probably thought. So she convinced me to play basketball. <laughs> And we went out to play basketball with two other, I'm thinking about this in, inclusion. And, it, and it, 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 it unwinds, you know, it's not defined, it's happening. And we're, we're happening in it. Is that a word? <laughs> anyway, we're making it happen, okay? <laughs> and um, she, so I say, oh yeah, we'll, we'll play some basketball. We, we went out to the garage where she had about 40 basketballs, I don't know why. And um, we went out into the yard, and we were playing against these two guys. One was 25, and one was 30, and they both had Down syndrome, and they cheat. I mean, these dudes cheat. You come near them, you get ready to block. You get ready to block, they say, foul. <laughs> so, <laughs> mind you, we didn't get to the point where we blocked. It was just the attempt at blocking, foul. And I'm thinking to myself, now, she wasn't complaining. You know, I'm saying, wait a minute, hold up. You know, maybe because I'm older and I'm not supposed to be even thinking about playing a by the way, my way of playing basketball is like I'm doing now. I walk like this. <laughs> I say, throw me the ball. They throw me the ball. I shoot it. That's my basketball, okay? <laughs> you understand basketball for me now? And so I'm, I'm, I'm watching her play. But you know what? She showed me, too, what it is. She just wanted to play. And the two young men wanted to play. They weren't concerned about winning. They just wanted to play. My grandmother figured out something very powerful. She figured out the power, one of the greatest organizing weapons is food. <laughs> and if it's free, people come early. Free food, every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I grew up with my neighbors coming in. So when little Shafiq would be down the block mad at Mr. Bazemore and decided to take the air out of his tires, by the time I got home, everybody knew that I had done that. And I'm thinking to myself, who told? Everybody told. But how did they know my name? Because they eat at my house every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Go figure it out, little Shafiq, you know? And I grew up like that. So I learned to go five blocks away instead of three, no. But anyway. <laughs> so my grandmother used food to get people to do what? See, you all think that wine and alcohol drinks get you like a little silly, right? Say yes, you do. Because y'all look like that right now, yeah. <laughs> Did y'all have wine for lunch? Anyway, so we, we're sitting there at the table. Everybody's talking and sharing beautiful stories and sharing concerns and thoughts and things that used to be problems when they came in. Where now we, we figured it out. We figured out what we could do. And remember, I'm just a little boy picking up crumbs off the floor, putting the chairs back when those floppy adults wouldn't do it. I helped do the dishes until I figured out one of the ways of getting out of doing dishes is to break a few. It took, that took me years, too. I was nine when I realized that one. 
my grandmom turned us into a community. She got no awards for it. Nobody put her on TV. She wasn't on the radio. Nobody wrote her up. But grandmom gave me all that is in me that tells me that I am one with you and though I am not the same and that that's okay. And so we came in as neighbors and we walked out as community and it was so good. My nightmare is that I would be alive in this chapter without life. Mm -hmm. That I cannot do everything I do right now, whether I'm missing an arm, whether I'm missing a leg. The only thing I'm concerned about losing is my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm being yeah. very honest. Yeah. Yes. If yeah. they have to amputate a leg or two, right. if they have to take an arm, I just want to be able to run my mouth, yes. to talk. Yes. to share all that is in my head. Yes. That it is, if I can't do that, my nightmare, become, my nightmare becomes real. Yeah. The dream for me is two things, to see both of my sons that I've already spoken about. Um, for one, my, my oldest, my 16-year-old, to, to go into flight and sustain his flight that he figures out what he needs and what he needs to create and who he needs to sustain his flight. Um, that he not be dependent, but understand interdependence. And secondly, for my youngest son, Corey, to be treated with full respect and the recognition of his great abilities outside of a special education classroom. Those are my dreams for the next chapter. I don't dream of anything in reference to Shana and I because it's already written and established. We will be and we will be fine. He's intense. He's real intense. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. And sometimes his intensity is, is frightening. I mean, you know, um, I, I would like him sometimes to be a little less intense. I know that his intensity um, is because he is so committed, you know, to, to things. You know, he, he has a saying, I don't, I'm not, I don't say things because I'm right. I say them because of their, it's what I feel. And um, he feels with great intensity, and it can be really, really scary. But, and I think a lot of times that adds to his, his cancer acting up. I know it does. And one of his friends once told him, you know, put yourself on your agenda, you know, take, you know. And, and I, I like to remind him, you know, that and reiterate what she said, you know, to, to do that, you know, put yourself on your agenda. And there are times when I forget to, you know, that he, he is like that, and I know there are times when I, I give him reason to be intense. <laughs> <laughs> and that, I know those are some of the things that, that, that I need to give attention and recognition to as well. But um, those are the things that I would say were really important. I, <laughs> yeah, I love you too.